What's up everyone and welcome to part 4 in the video series about how to get good at using Procreate. And in this video, we're going to be covering colors. All right, so let's dive right into it. Now, the first thing to know is that you can pick up a color by tapping your finger down just like this, and then it picks up that color. So you can move it around and select the specific color that you're looking for just like this, and then you can start painting with a color. You can pick up another one just like this green one over here, and we can draw with that and maybe get this one over here, the orange one, and then we can draw with that. Pretty simple. Now let's say that you're switching between two specific colors very frequently. So let's say this orange one is the first one, and this green one is the second color. So what we're doing is we're switching between these two colors very frequently. So we draw with the one, and then we want to draw with the other, and we want to go back and forth between these two colors. Now, in Procreate there's a very simple gesture to do this. What you do is you tap and hold on the color picker, like so, and then it switches to the previously chosen color. So, tap and hold, then we got the white, tap and hold, then we got the orange, tap and hold, back to the white, pretty cool. Now let's take a look at the color menu itself. So, we tap on this one over here, and here we can do all the color selection, color mixing, keeping all the colors in place using palettes, so it's basically structured in four ways. We have the disc, we have the classic, we have the values and palettes. Let's start with the disc. So on the outer ring over here, we have the hue of the color. So the hue can be maybe red, we can have it green or blue or anywhere in between. The inner circle over here determines the brightness or the saturation of the color. So if you want it a completely saturated blue, you would put it over here. If you want it completely desaturated, you would put it over here. Or if you want it black, then you would put it down over there. Now if you're looking for a very precise color, like exactly this one over there, what you can do is you can pinch in on the color wheel and that just makes it go full size. Pinch out to go back and then you can select the exact color that you're looking for. Like this one right over here. There we go. Perfect. So now that you've found your perfect color, what you want to do is you want to store that color somewhere to be able to use that again sometime later. So there's a simple way to do that. You simply tap on one of the squares over here and that saves the color. Pretty simple. You can move it around like so and then create what's called a color palette. And we'll go into that in more details a little bit later. But if you want to delete a color from this color palette, what you do is you tap and hold and then release and then Tap on delete. Now let's go over the three different color tools that we have in the menu here. We have the disc, we have the classic, and then we have the values. Now the disc is pretty good for the basic stuff, just drawing in, making some changes, storing colors and, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty good for that kind of stuff. But if you want to get the exact value or the exact color of something like the Facebook logo or something like that, you would use the values. And there you can type in the hexadecimal value of the color, or you can play around with the RGB sliders over here, or the hue saturation and brightness on the top over there. So this is the best way to select the colors if you have the precise value of the color that you want to use. Now let's talk about the one in between the values and the disc, which is the classic. Now the classic and the disc are conceptually very similar, but there are certain scenarios which the classic handles much better. So let's say, for example, if you want to select a completely white color, what you do is you just go all the way to the top left and it selects completely white. If you want a completely black, you go all the way down, completely saturated and anywhere in between. So it's, it's very easy to get to the colors precisely if you want the extreme values. On the contrary, if you want to select a completely white in the disc, it will be kind of hard to get to that. So let's, let's try to select a completely white, like this one maybe. Now we see that it is not completely white. A completely white color would be FFFFFFF. So let's try that again. So 
try to get the exact top left corner over here. Well, this isn't the corner because it's a circle, but you see, it's not completely white. So it's really hard to get exactly white using the disc. So in that case, the classic is much better suited for that job. So let's take a look at how the classic picker works. So on this axis over here, we have the hue. And here we can change between all of the different colors that are available in the hue. And here we change the saturation of the color. So how saturated do you want the color to be? And this is the brightness. So the brightness goes up and down, saturation goes left to right. And yeah, that's how that works. All right, so we've gone through the disc, we've gone through the classic, the values, and the fourth one over here is the palettes. So if we click on this one, we can see all of the palettes that are available to us in Procreate. Now palettes are basically just a collection of colors. So here is the collection of colors that I use for art and design, for example. Now Procreate ships with a couple of default color palettes, which you can use right out of the box. And they're actually pretty good. So we have one color on one end, and then another color on the other end. And then there's a slight graduate change between the colors so that you can composite your image with colors that match and really go well together. So that's pretty cool. And if you want to create your own color palette, you tap on the plus icon right over here, give it a name by tapping on the name over there and title palette, name it whatever you want, and then make sure that it is selected as the default, and then start adding colors to the color palette that you really like. So add some red, maybe add some desaturation to the red. Now I would use the classic for this one if you want to create color palettes because it's just easier to control the saturation because you just move this slider here and you create another one over here. And what I usually do is I change the hue just a bit, then I bring the saturation down, then I add a point, move the saturation down, move the hue, move the saturation down again, change the hue and don't make it go too much to the green, but you get the idea. It's basically having two colors and then creating a gradual shift between them by manipulating the saturation and the hue. Now I am oversimplifying things a bit here because we're getting into the topic of color theory and that might simply be a topic for a future video. But if you are looking for a quick and easy way to create good looking palettes, I recommend checking out Wheel Masks. It's a pretty impressive app for iOS that allows you to create and customize your own palettes. You can adjust things like the saturation levels, hue levels, and brightness of the palette. You can then rotate and scale, in this case, the triangle over here, to select the colors that you want to include in your palette. Once you're satisfied with the colors in the palette, you can then export the palette directly to Procreate. And just make sure that you don't have too many colors in the Wheel Masks palette, because Procreate can only support up to 30 colors in each palette. Anyways, let's get back to the tutorial. So now we have our color palette in the list here and we want to move it to the top. So we tap and hold and then just use the other hand to help. And then drag it to the top over here. And you see this button over here, set default. What this basically does, it sets this palette as the default for the disc, for the classic. So you can see that color palette in there. And if we change the default to this one, then we can see that color palette shows right over here. All right, now at some point you might wanna download a color palette from someone else. So let's go to the forums and we do that by tracking in the Chrome window like this. And I'll leave a link to the forums in the description and also right on the screen right here. But anyway, we wanna find a color palette that we like. So let's try maybe this one, DuckTales colors. So there's a Dropbox link here. I'm just gonna tap that. And this opens up Dropbox and then it says no preview available, okay. We tap on this icon over here, tap on export, open in. And then we find Procreate in the list over here. We tap on that. And now we've imported the color palette to Procreate. If we scroll right down at the bottom, we see the color palette has popped in over here. We can select that as the default since we're gonna be using that all of the time. And there we go, we can start painting with the colors that we downloaded from the internet. It's pretty cool. Now if you want to share this color palette with your friends or anyone else on the internet, what you do is you swipe to the left over here, you tap on share, and then you select the location that you want to save or share this file with. So you can select maybe Messenger or Files or the Cloud or Dropbox or whatever you want. Select that, save it, send it, do whatever you want.
Now let's talk about the color fill. So what I'm talking about here is the ability to color in a specific section of colors. So the way we do that is we select the layer itself that we want to color, and then we drag the color drop tool to the location that we want to color, and then move while holding the pen, move it to the right to increase the threshold, and that makes it just spread and decrease it by moving to the left. So the higher the threshold, the more the color is going to spread to other colors around it. So if we move it to the right here, we just want to fill in just this section over here. Oh, we've gone a little bit too far. We see that it has spread now. So we just want this one over here, this little section over here. So we want to dial it just a bit back. And I think that's perfect right here. And now we might want to do the same with the white section over here. So let's pick another color, something bright like this yellow over here. And we just want to fill this one in just by dragging and dropping, increasing the tolerance. Oh, too much. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now we've recolored in just this specific section of colors on this layer. So it's a pretty powerful tool. If you're working on a single layer, you can select a specific section and just color in that section. So let me show you another way to use the color drop tool. So we make a new layer and make a circular kind of shape over here. And now if we drag and drop the color, it just fills it in completely. And we can select another color here and then just drag and drop. And that's a pretty nice way if you just want to completely fill in the color, you can just do this like that. Now, if we were to drop it here, for example, it would just color in the whole thing because this tiny section over there isn't really closed off. So you have to have a closed path in order to drop in the selection. Now let's talk about reference layers. Now reference layers are basically used as a reference for the color drop tool. So you specify which layer should be used as a reference. So let's say this little guy over here, we're going to use that as a reference. So we set that as a reference and then we select the empty layer above it and we select the color and now we can drag and drop the color drop to the empty layer and the empty layer is going to use the reference layer as its outline. So it's a kind of a neat way to do things. I don't really use that much because I can simply make a selection and fill in the selection in the same way. But it's cool that it exists. I heard that some cartoon artists use this a lot, but I'm not sure. I'm not a cartoon artist, so I can't really speak for that population. Maybe you'll find it useful and tell me how you use it. Leave a comment down below uh, if you see a cool use for this sort of feature. At any rate, I want to thank you all very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, if it helped you out, leave a thumbs up. It really helps me out. You can share this video with your friends if they're learning how to use Procreate. If you want to check out the next video in this series where I'm going to be talking about layers, click on this one right here. Click on here. If you want to check out another video of mine, click here to subscribe to the channel. And thank you all for subscribing. It's been wonderful to see how much the community is growing. At any rate, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.